looking out for Bart Rice if he comes on board so we can talk to him. Uh, let's get started. Good gracious, welcome. We're uh, sponsored tonight by the Community College in Clinton, South in Clinton, North Carolina, Sampson Community College, which is right next door to my county, which I'm in Harnett County, and the uh, Small Business Center at the Community College is facilitating and sponsoring this event, and they have for about 12 consecutive years, so we're very thankful for them. The director at that community college is Mr. Bart Rice. He's a fine young man. He helps everyone that he does business with. He works with you confidentially. Let's see if y'all can hear Bart's message. If you will, turn your volume up because these videos sometimes coming through the platform will get a little bit scrambled. So if you'll turn your volume up, maybe you'll be able to hear what Bart has to say. I work in this small business. Basically what this is is something that was created about 30 years ago, and it was designed to help people start uh, small businesses or improve a small business that they've already started. Well, a lot of times they either seek me out or they're referred to me by somebody else, and they're coming you know, because they don't have any idea on how to start a small business. So what I do is I take, uh, listen to them and take their ideas and any dreams they might have had or just, you know, the things that they had thought about while they were working a mundane, regular day-to-day -day job. And I help them kind of put it, put a real stamp on it. Um, I listen, give some guidance, and try, try to push them in the right direction uh, in order to succeed. Well, that's, a, that's the best thing about the Small Business Center. It's, everything is no cost. We do the confidential um, appointments that we help, uh, counseling appointments, and we also do seminars. And uh, they kind of build, help them learn the skills that they're going to need to succeed in a small business today. And all of that's at no cost. Well, I, when they come in, maybe they might just have an idea that it's in their head or they've sketched it down. I want to help them try to make that real. Define which way they want to go. And help them get there and also start a business and employ people in the community to improve the overall economy. Mr. Carver, I can't hear anything this Valerie. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Valerie. Uh, that happens. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I, hear I can you. hear you, Steve. I just can't hear anything else. Right. right. I can hear you well, but um, I could hear very little, but then when I went to my volume the second time when he started over, you couldn't hear anything. I understand. Well, sometimes we have trouble with these videos, but I don't try to play them anyway because they're so important. That I appreciate you letting me know, but you are able to hear me okay, correct? Yes, sir. Thank yes. you. Because I also had trouble getting in, too. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, Bart Rice is at Clinton, and if you're in North Carolina and you're not in the Clinton area, uh, but you'd like to be in touch with the Small Business Center in your region, just send me an email. Let me know where you're at, and I'll be able to connect you with the Small Business Center that's nearest you. I've worked with 17 different small business centers, so I'll know most of the people all over the state. Well, my name's Steve Carver. I'm just an old, old gray-headed fellow that's been in business about 63 years, uh, done a lot of work, uh, and for the last 12 years, or I've been uh, working with the small business centers and entrepreneurs all over the state, uh, helping them get their businesses started. So it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. This is my presentation, number 933, and we're well on the way to 1,000. Please know right now that I am not a lawyer and I am not a CPA. I'm just a fellow that's here to offer you free advice in the best nature possible to hopefully help get you started in the business that you want to be in and see some dreams come true. So I always say to you, you get several opinions, and don't make a – don't make a serious business move or investment without getting some good uh, educated or experienced opinions to help you, uh, including anything that I say, I'll uh, welcome you to challenge it anywhere because we're just trying to help you move forward, and I look, look forward to doing that. Uh, I've been in business since 1959. At 12 years old, my dad moved from Fedville to Dunn, North Carolina, and started an Alice Chalmers tractor business. And through the years, it's grown into a lot of different things and a lot of different businesses. So, but our, our business started in 1959, May 1st, 1959. 
and we're still kicking and still here. So, and now I need to change this slide to say 2022 because we're certainly happy to be here. My main business is selling of implements on the internet with CarverEquipment.com. You're welcome to visit there, and you'll see through this series if you hang with us, you'll see that everything that I'm teaching I actually put into play at my website and other websites. So I'm not I'm not that fellow that read a book. I'm the fellow that does it every day. Uh, I have a very good business. I deal with customers all over the United States, uh, with, uh, and they're in all different types of businesses. So hopefully whatever you're doing, I'll have a little bit of insight to be able to, to help you as well. Through the years, I've operated a huge uh, commercial uh, uh, mowing business. So I've got a lot of expertise in that. I've done a lot of federal uh, contracting, different types of contracting uh, with different federal agencies and with the military as well. Uh, ran those contracts for a lot of years. I've had as many as 2,000 employees in the 62 years that we've been in business. And uh, so I'll be in a position to help you with employee issues as well. But what I'm doing right now and doing it tonight is entrepreneur coaching, which is the most gratifying thing I've ever done to be able to, to, to feel like I'm, I, I've joined you on your journey uh, to getting the business started. And if, if in some small way I can help you uh, uh, enjoy business success and security with less stress, then it's worth the effort, and I certainly feel good about it. Uh, this is the area that when seminars were going on, I traveled all over this area again to, to uh, uh, 27 different small business centers to help them get started in their businesses. Um, Family-wise, I'll send greetings to your family from mine. Uh, this is my bride, Norma, here. And uh, 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 Norma's a beautiful lady and, and, and a, a great partner. Uh, between our mixed families or, or combined families, we have 12 children and 14 grandchildren and one great-grandchild. Lots of animals, including this is uh, Thomas. He's about a 28-pound cat right here. I'll tell you about other our other animals as we go along in the series. But uh, if this doesn't do anything else, it tells you that old Steve-O knows what stress is uh, and also what uh, what drama is. And drama is a, is a key factor with anyone that's running a business. So here's some of our grandchildren. Uh, all of them send their greetings and loves to your family as well. I want to go steady with you for the next seven weeks. Yeah, we're starting tonight on Thursday night. So if you will and you're able to and you like what we're doing, how about planning on staying with us for, for seven weeks? What I'll guarantee you is, is that we'll talk about a lot of, a lot of issues that will help you grow your business in a better way so you'll have more business with less stress and hopefully a lot more profits. Uh, of course, tonight we're going to talk about things related to starting your business and we'll go through business plans, marketing, finding customers, keeping money in the business, uh, secrets about bookkeeping and taxes and and also a, a, a 30 drill skills that are really help you out with different things. But uh, we'll be doing a lot. And uh, we have so many folks that are what we like to call our academy now, and I've given it a new name over the holidays instead of just Entrepreneur's Academy. It has been so apparent that it's so important that the academy graduates come back and become our associates because we're getting such good feedback and information that our associates are just as important as I am. So the academy name now is the Academy of Entrepreneurs and Associates, and I welcome you all to be a part of this group because it is a fabulous networking group. If you're new and this is your first time to, in one of these series, you are able to win a lot of certificates. Uh, if you're just along for the ride and want to enjoy it and not really become committed, if you simply attend five out of the seven classes, then you'll be eligible to get you a nice certificate. But if you become um, more dedicated to, uh, to to making things happen, uh, you can get uh, a, what we call a, 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 a graduate certificate, uh, which proves that you did a, a lot more things and really took it more serious and started doing some homework and classes to, uh, to, to move your business forward. And if you really kick it in and, and do some things that I challenge you to, 
uh, in learning skills, <coughs> excuse me, setting up some accounts, uh, doing some special things, then I'll be very happy to send you an extra mile for extraordinary achievement uh, award. And uh, uh, I hope you can just fill up your whole wall with uh, certificates uh, proving that you've worked hard. Now, here's something unique about the webinars that we do with Bart, and that I'm inviting you, as he does, if there's something special that you need to help you get your business moving in a certain area of, of uh, advice or, or, or studies or you have some questions, whether it's in our, our uh, uh, syllabus or not, whether it's in our plan program or not, all you got to do is just send me an email and say, Steve, how about spending some time with this particular issue that you're dealing with? And whether I include it into the classes or not, or simply just work with you one-on-one, -on -one, we'll try to answer any issues that you have to help you move forward. So here's my email address. Write it down, uh, stvcarv at aol.com. Now, exchange an email is my vehicle to be able to respond to you, to send you information, and for you to be able to send information to me. I can take as much as you want to give me or as little as you want to send. But when I have your email address, and I'll guarantee you I'll keep you alert and try to motivate you to get your business started because that's what a coach is supposed to do. I'm just trying to do my best to be the best coach I can for you. Now, some people go the extra mile, and every week I'll, I'll uh, single out and show you some of our uh, graduates that uh, just go the extra mile and helping other people, plus help to get their business get started. The first one we'll talk about tonight is Denise Sutton from over in Warsaw. Denise is a full-time nurse at Cherry Hospital in Goldsboro, but more than that, she's also a great uh, poet and songwriter and singer and public speaker. And in your handout, you'll see a, a poem that she wrote uh, for entrepreneurs that we like to use uh, every year to start our, our season off. And the most important part of this that I always are drawn to is when Denise said, and while making money is one of those things that I dream of, I cherish more than being able to work for a while with what I love. Calling the shots, making the decisions, I would be free. So I'll continue to cherish the entrepreneurship within me. And that's what we're all about, is I love being a business person. I love being an entrepreneur. But more than that, I do and love working with all of you because uh, it just brings me such uh, gratification to know that maybe we're moving forward. Another one that I want to single out tonight is uh, Bertie Fernandez in Fayetteville, who's in the process of moving out to Las Vegas. She's been one of our graduates for the last two years. And Bertie's just done an excellent job with a uh, with her business, I've been to her business before where she does all different types of neat stuff, including uh, retro decor and does pin-up photos. What I want to encourage you to do, if you haven't already, is to start learning how to make videos to promote your business. Because it's going to be so important in, in 2022. So Bernie hadn't, has been in business for a lot of years, but this past uh, fall she made a video for us. Let me share that with you. And I understand that maybe you're not able to understand the uh, uh, what she's saying because of this platform, but I'll be glad to send it to send these to you. But just to give you an idea of what she learned how to do it. Hello, Bertie. Off email that's there with you every step of the way. If you're fortunate enough to work with clients from all over the world, you can publish the new series. So if you want something to do a little different, you can see that. So Bernie's just a, just a wonderful lady and doing a good job, and we're blessed tonight to have uh, Frank with us tonight. I don't know if Keith is back on board tonight or not, but uh, Frank Walters and Keith over in the Monroe, uh, Charlotte area. Uh, have a fabulous business where they make uh, uh, accessories to go on different types of automobiles. Uh, been in business a while, but this past year, Keith and Frank decided to uh, maybe move their business forward and grow it. They've done a great job with their uh, website and their Facebook presentations. 
I'm getting, I'm, I'm still uh, encouraging them to do me some videos and share them with us, but so glad to have uh, Keith and Frank on board with, with us. And then over in Clinton, uh, we're going to honor Rayford Wells. Uh, Rayford was a full-time truck driver for a lot of years, but this past year decided to go into entrepreneurship. He has two businesses where he trains the most beautiful horses you've ever seen that he has of his own. Plus, he trains horses for other people, and he started a towing business. So Rayford did his first video for us. Hopefully, this year, we're going to be making some more and making them improved. And God bless you, Rayford. You know, what this is all about is together we help each other uh, grow our businesses and, and serve as feedback opportunities. So if you're just getting your business started and you haven't done any videos or testimonials or got your website started or got your uh, YouTube uh, channel done or haven't got active on Facebook, you stay with this series of seminars and we'll, we'll do our best to motivate you to do it. Uh, three years ago, Ted McIntyre here that you see here from Wilmington, North Carolina, was a member of our academy. He's done a great job. I passed everything off good. And I've had a great pleasure working with Ted and watching his business grow because now we have a, a an in-house person that can help you and anyone else that wants to get some videos done to get your business started. Uh, Ted is very patient, very affordable, and will do a very good job for you. So I'm glad to recommend him. So what you're seeing me do here is to take this academy of associates that we all are, and as we grow through the years, I'll do my very best to promote your business right here with these seminars. So here's your first challenge. Send me your name. Let me know your business, the, the type of business that you hope to get started in your email address, and we'll start this communication, and I'll, I'll do all that I can to promote you and your business and whatever place that you're at. I'll try to help you get to the next step up. And that's what Entrepreneur Academy Ship is all about. So here's some tiny tips of wisdom, okay? They're in your handout, but each week I'll try to give you some, some little tidbits that'll help you uh, if you hadn't thought about it. As you're first getting started, I want you to plan for the unexpected because I'll guarantee you you'll get unexpected things to happen all the time. Like today, four hours ago, my sound system shut down on my computer here. I normally don't wear headphones and a mic, but uh, in order to be able to talk to you and hear you tonight, I had to dig these out and got them on. Uh, several people told me it's an improvement as far as sound-wise, but we'll see. Number two, put a team together that you can trust, a team of people that will help you, uh, your small business center, me, uh, your attorney, someone to help you with your videos and your website work. Uh, it's hard to do this all by yourself. Now, for a lot of years, I was in business, uh, had 20 employees and seven managers, and for a lot of time, my dad was there to help me. And then right now, I find myself in business right by myself. Of course, i got my bookkeeper who's been with me for 45 years. But making decisions by yourself is kind of hard to do. But I've learned through my association with you guys, with the Academy, and the feedback that we do back and forth. It's just like I've got a committee right here with all of you that help me do a better job in my business. And if you will accept and learn how to uh, uh, learn how to use the uh, Academy here, it can serve as a, as a good uh, benefit for you as well. <laughs> Expect things to go wrong from time to time. It's just going to happen. Things will not go smoothly. It's life, and entrepreneurship is a slice of life, I'll guarantee you that. And maybe most importantly, you have to stay in the game long enough to learn the little secrets. Stay in the game. Don't give up. Get your business planner started, and then we'll do a business plan and just take it one step at a time. I'll tell you that in a, in a while, you'll start seeing that you're learning the secrets that make the difference. 
And there's just a lot of ways to do that. So you have to be kind of determined to stay in the game long enough to do it. Now, my job as a coach is to be assertive. And a lot of people say that's a bad word. You know, that's, that's something nobody likes is somebody that's assertive. But I'll guarantee you the only way that people get motivated is someone else is assertive. So that's the role that I'm going to take. I don't love you, and I don't cry for you if we need to cry and pat you on the back and help hold you up. But primarily, it's my job to try to help move you forward as much as you will let me try to help you. So my first question to you in that, in that light is, are you the missing person? Are you the person that said, I want to get a business started, but I didn't ever get to the point I could get it started? Well, I call that the missing person because something was something was happening that didn't work. Let me see if I can find some uh, microphones here that I can silence. Okay, we got some feedback. Let me ask you to to uh, mute your microphone if if it's uh, still on because we're getting feedback. Okay. I need to. I'm sorry for this break. I need to see if I can see everybody. Uh, there we go. There we go. Okay. We got just a good crowd tonight. Denise, I'm glad to see you on board. We just gave you a little plug there and appreciated your poem. And Chick, good to have you on board. And I'm going to go down mute microphones now, so give me just a minute. Got over twenty people on board right now. That's fantastic. Okay, are you the missing person? Here's what I'm saying. Have you, I want you to list your five profit centers, and we'll talk a lot about profit centers. That may be a new term for you. But if you don't have at least five profit centers, then you, you're not really serious about getting your business started in a substantial way. I, I'm going to encourage you to write a mission and a vision and a promise statement because when you do that, you're going to learn how to plant raving fan customer seeds. I'm going to encourage you to, to do YouTube videos and to have an actual YouTube video channel of your own because that's kind of like getting a free website. I want to encourage you to be active on Facebook. Not that you have to like Facebook because I personally don't care for it from the social media part, but I love it from the standpoint of people being able to do business on it because I do business there and so many other people do, and it's basically a free way to get started. So we'll spend some time on Facebook and I want to encourage you to be there. Take photos of yourself related to your business and of your products. Learn how to make images because the images is what people will see on the internet and that you can email folks images and, and become a, a, a real business person and learn how to promote your product. So I know I encourage you to take those photos and send me copies of them and give me permission to use them so that I can help promote you and your business and we can all grow it together. If you haven't used any DBAs, doing business as, for your signature items, for your private labels, for your logos and your slogans, DBAs are going to be really important to you helping you grow your business and we'll talk about that. So let's say you're not doing any of that. In other words, you're the missing person in the room that was uh, uh, doing these different things that I was encouraging you to do. So what happens if you don't do any of those? Well, here's where you're going to end up, in the business graveyard. And forgive me for being just blunt with it and assertive, but if you're not serious about it, you're never going to get out of the graveyard. It just didn't know how to happen. And you only end up with this side in front of your store instead of we're having a great big a 61st anniversary sale, it'll be sorry we're closed up until further notice. I don't want this for you or for any other small business person. So let's look at that positive spirit and start making things happen. Here's my email address. Please write it down. Please drop me an email tonight. Uh, if you can, tell me your name, your type of business, the town you're in, and your email address, or write it all over here on the chat board, and I'll pick it up there. <clears throat> that way we'll be able to start exchanging information and I can see how your business is going. I'd like for you to send me any website links that you already have. If you're already on Facebook, let me have those links, personal photos that you'd like for us to use to promote you and your business. Any photos related to your business, let me have those too. 
Uh, if you have a Google My Business account, let me have that. And if you don't have it, I don't ask you to get one, as well as YouTube videos. Any information you can share with us, I'll share with the Academy, and therefore we'll start networking to help you grow your business. Now, one of the handouts that was mailed to you, one of the study guides emailed to you, was what we call the 30 Main Street Smart Things to Know. And this is a, a group of, uh, of strategies and, and tips that I put together, and, and Ted helped me, helped me put it in videos, so that when you open up this email, you will have links to different videos, 30 drill skills. And I'll challenge you to one a day, just do one a day, or as many a day as you'd like to, start making these drill skills a part of your DNA for business. And here's what I will promise you. You will make more money. You will have less stress. And your co company will have a chance to make it over a long period of time if you take these drill skills and they're very short little, little thinking ways to think about doing business. If you start applying those to your way of thinking and doing business, I will guarantee you things will go better for you. So each week for the first five weeks, we're going to do six skills each night. And we'll, we'll kind of rehearse them uh, as we go along. But each week we'll start doing some of these. So tonight our drill skills start out with number one, and that is why do you want a great business plan? You want a business plan to help you avoid unexpected pitfalls and to tell you what's left. What's left after you take your expected expenses and subtract them from your estimated income to know what's left. That's what a business plan needs to tell you. And if that what's left is red ink, then we don't need to make some changes to make it black ink. And I try to keep it just that simple. Your marketing plan needs to tell you what's next. That is, in week three, we don't talk about business plan next week, but in week three, we're going to talk about the marketing plan and how it can help you know how much business you're going to be doing in the next few weeks, in the next year, in the next few months. A marketing plan is to help you not only make sales, but to give you the information that you need to do some planning. And so it's a simple process, but it's one you need to make a part of your fundamental way of doing business. Now we're going to talk about profit centers. And a profit center, you don't hear a lot about it during the next few weeks because I want you to have to know that there are three types of profit centers and I want you to have at least five of them in your business. But the three types of profit centers are those that bring in new customers and build traffic. Those that focus on merchandising sales and, and repeat business at higher margins and those that bring in big ticket sales. Now, read over these again with me. New customers, repeat business, big ticket sales. If we've got these three things covered in your business and it's part of your business plan and what you're doing every day and the way you're thinking about how you're going to make money, things are going to go a whole lot better for you. And I want you to have at least five marketable profit centers. Now, I've got the word marketable here. You see here? The reason that is is that your profit centers need to be able to be marketed separately because when you can market these different things separately, you'll bring in different groups of customers for each profit center. Therefore, the different groups of customers will help you, help you have sales all year long, all, all the way through as you go. Number four, we'll talk about the RFC, and that is the raving fan customer. And the Raven fan customer is that customer that goes out in the world and tells everybody else what a great business you have and how much fun it is to do business with you. And we'll talk a lot about them because they're the best money you've got in your cash register is those Raven fan customers and how to stay in touch with them. NDCP, I like rock, paper, scissors. No demand, change the plan. One, two, three, four. No demand, change the plan. And that is telling us that when we do our business plan, we got to know that we got to be willing to change it because we'll come up with some great ideas at the time that just aren't worth a darn. And be willing to change. Having flexibility is a key to success as an entrepreneur.
And last real skill tonight, and see, there's not a lot of them. They're easy to hang on to, is A, B, C, D. And that is always be connecting the dots. We always want to make decisions that help us make better decisions. And I like to say that as we're making decisions that make, they need to make sense to keep our business moving forward. And I like to always connect my dots in a circle because that represents a wheel that's moving forward. And, and we need to think that way. So A, B, C, D. Now, when you go to your handout and you see your videos there and you go to those videos that I've done for you, I spend a little bit more time on each one of these to help you kind of own it. So please, please check those videos out and start learning these and it'll really help you. Now, our, our uh, handout tonight and this, and our talking points are pretty much based on a book that I wrote several years ago when Norma was in the hospital with cancer. And by the way, I, I think we've got that wheel, but it was a real learning experience. Uh, I will say right now that uh, living through uh, that experience with Norma helped me know that the power of prayer is real. It makes a difference in people's lives if you accept if you accept the power of prayer as something that can make a difference in your life. I'll tell you, it can make a difference in your business life too. So you'll find out as we go along. You'll learn more about me, and I do have a strong belief, and I think that it applies to business as well as it does to everyday life. So your study guides are in the email to you, and if you didn't get email and you don't have these study guides, then send me an email or write it in the chat board tonight. Make sure I have your email address, and I'll send you copies of all these. Send you eight emails, and, and some of them are pretty cool. Uh, of course, the study guide for 24 things to know, that's what we're talking about now. But there's an email there with 50 businesses that you can start with $100 or less. There's a summary of what the whole Academy series is about this uh, next month or so. We talk about fair market value, market profitable centers, how to name your business and your DBAs and your website, and a little bit about how to stack your profits with upsells. All these are very valuable. I suggest uh, through the next week that you try to find time to read them. It's easy reading, and I think you'll enjoy them. So getting started in tonight's process, if you if you had come to me uh, for individual coaching, as several of you that's on board tonight have, I'll have a group of questions. As a matter of fact, I have a pre-written group of 30 questions that I ask everyone that's getting ready to start a business. But I'm just going to go through a few of them tonight. You can read them all or most of them in your handout. <clears throat> I want you to answer these questions not for me, but for yourself. So question number one is, are you going to be personally active in the business, or are you planning on starting a business and hiring someone else to do the work? Fair question, right? It's an important question that you need to realize that if you're going to be active in the business, then whatever you're doing now Where's the time going to come from to make it happen? And that says, is it going to be part-time or full-time? Yeah, I'm not encouraging you to give up a good-paying job with benefits to start a new business that's risky. Steve-O doesn't do that. I will say to you, though, if it is going to be full-time, let's identify that because we're going to have to be more serious about making sure that business plan gets up and running in a hurry so you can start generating revenue. Full-time or part-time? Is your business going to be home-based or a mobile business or an Internet business or a bricks-and-mortar business, that is, have a storefront, or maybe some type of combination of these? Now, I've done all of these. Of course, right now I'm operating a home-based business, and it's an Internet business. Right now I'm not getting in a truck and going to other places and doing business, but I did when I was giving seminars. So each one of these different types of businesses will have an impact on how we do your business plan because you almost need to do a little sub-chapter in your business plan for each type of business that you have because each one of the different businesses will have different expenses and will generate different types of income. So answer those questions in your own mind or on your handout. What date, if you're not already open, what date do you want to actually open the business? And if, if you're just thinking about getting a business started, I want to tell you that usually it takes about two years to become actually 
uh, in business in a meaningful way. Or maybe if you're just changing a hobby into a business, it might take you five years to do it. But I need to ask the question, and you need to answer it. So when we do your business plan, we'll base it on the actually opening date that you want to try to achieve, and also the planner that we do. So when do you want to open your business? Now, several of you I already know already are in business. So this question is, what do you want to do before now, between now and June 1st, or between now and next September? Is there a new part of your business that you want to get started? And that's just as important because growing a business is just as hard as opening one sometime. So if your purpose for being a part of this academy is to help grow your business, then we will approach it from that standpoint. You've got certain objectives that you want to get done at a certain time. Let's talk about that. Now, it's up to you to tell me the products and the service or the information that you want to sell. What is it that you have that you want someone to reach in their pocket and give you your money for? You know, entrepreneurship is getting someone to give you your money out of their pocket. And when you think about it that way, it just takes away all the chafe. We get right down to the asphalt. My friends, we are here to sell and to make money and to earn a profit and to satisfy our customers. So let's just put it right out there. Let's talk about these products or services that we're going to sell and, and, and uh, figure out what we're going to charge for it, where we're going to get them, and how we're going to make some money. Is your present credit score and debt paying history, is it one that will encourage a lender to loan you money or not? You know the answer to the question. And if it's a great credit score and you've got a good history of paying debts and, and you've been in business or you've had a lot of debt through the years and you've established a credit reputation that's great, then okay. But if you're young or, or haven't had a chance to do any of this stuff, then we don't have to deal with that if the type of your business is going to require you to borrow money or to go in debt with the people that's helping you grow your business. If you need to improve your credit score or to improve your uh, credit statements or whatever, and you want to, uh, me to send you a, a study guide with lots of good tips to help you get that process started, uh, just let me know in the email, and I'll be glad to share with you a free study guide on how to improve your credit score uh, right away with little tips that you can start doing tomorrow. <clears throat> now, you're getting ready to get in business, or you've been in business a while, and it's important that you have kind of what I call your pedigree written out or your resume. So it's time for you to start making a list of what qualifies you to be in business. What qualities or achievements or degrees or certificates have you earned that will encourage a customer or a vendor or a manufacturer to supply you with the goods you need? You know, Entrepreneurship is really growing now. As a matter of fact, I heard on the news this past week that they expect in the next two years more people to start their own businesses than they ever have before. So I'm just really proud that you guys are here because you're part of that group. But you don't need to list down your credentials. Now, I'll say right now that one of the credentials that will turn heads is these certificates that we're uh, are, are glad to share with you if you complete these courses that I've been mentioning. And we do these all throughout the year. So these will look good on your resume if you don't have any college degrees or, or, or uh, other types of training certificates. You can plug those right in there, and they look pretty darn good. And when someone looks into them, they'll see that what you learn in these seven weeks will probably be more valuable to you than what you would learn in a semester of college. I have a lot of people that tell me that year after year after year. So list down your qualifications because that's going to be an important part of your presentations as you get your business started. I want you to encourage you and challenge you to write, to write, that is to actually put pen on paper or use your computer and spell out what your mission is in, in business what your vision is for your business, and the promises that you want to make to yourself, your employees, and your customers. Put it down in a statement. 
Yep. You know why? Because when you actually do that, what you're going to do is you're going to learn how to start marketing yourself and your business as you write that down. Now, if you want me to send you some samples of mission and vision statements that folks have shared uh, through the years with me, I'll be glad to do that. And I encourage you to look at other people's work because it will help uh, uh, save you some time and study because you'll pick up ideas from that. But it's going to be important that you have that mission, vision, and promise statement. And that will qualify you for an extra uh, certificate with, uh, with with the academy. They will tell the... Uh, tell the, uh, the community what the, co the company is going to do, what it's going to do for the customers. It's going to say what it's going to do for its employees. And it's also going to say what the owners and the company's goals are and talk about the standards that you have uh, for your company. That's why it's important to actually spell those out. And they will certainly change as you go along. You need a mentor or a coach or advisor or counselor let me encourage you right now not to go this alone, but to find someone that you can talk to and exchange ideas and get feedback from. Find someone that is not, uh, uh, doesn't have any skin in your game other than to try to help you move forward. I am happy to do that with you. And, uh, you know, I'm proud to tell you that the, uh, uh, the Academy and the Associates of Previous Graduates, we get a lot of good feedback, but you just have to be willing to share. You just have to be willing to share in such a way that you can give and accept advice and hear what other people are saying. Uh, when, when we do these uh, people that are going the extra miles uh, uh, each week, you'll start seeing some folks will really let you know what's on their mind and how we can help them. Start with a solid footing. And a solid footing means a commitment. That vision and mission and promise statement is as good of a way to get your uh, a cornerstone in place as possible because that gives you the mindset that you need. And we're always going to need to know that customer retention has to be a goal that we have every day. Hold it on to those customers every day for years and years and years. How important is that? I can tell you that today or this week, uh, I did a sale for a, 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 a hay baler with a family that I did business with the grandfathers, or my dad did business with the grandfather of the fellow that was doing business with me, and I've done business with his dad. If you've got a good customer base, a long-term base, you can stay in business for 50, 60, 70 years if you take care of each individual customer and understand how important it is to retain those customers. Let's see, got some feedback coming in here. Let me see if I can find out where it is. Excuse me just a minute. Find a microphone I can mute. Maybe someone has already done it for me. Okay, excuse me, break there. I've got to figure out how to do that better. Part of your business to, be, to make it work for a long time is to have diversification in it. You want diversification in your product, in your surfaces, in your services. Therefore, you'll be able to have diversification with your customers. When you're able to have diversification, that means you will have business in December and de business in July. You'll sell to certain types of customers because here's one thing to remember. If you're doing one thing with one small group of customers, it will go south one day. I'll guarantee you it's just a matter of not if it's going to happen, it's when it's going to happen. So to diversify means you are strengthening your business, and it will give you a whole lot more confidence that your business is going to make it through the years when you do that. Maintain a positive attitude, be determined, and keep a lot of energy going in. Now, goals, chapter three here. If you don't have your personal goals for income, then we're not going to be able to make your business plan work for you. Because your business plan needs to be telling you what's left, and that what's left needs to be meeting your personal goals. And you need to know that that personal income that you want to have now and after you get started in business, if the money that you're going to start your business with is coming out of your mortgage payment and your insurance premiums and personal expenses, then getting this business started is going to be quite difficult unless you've got some money saved up 
or, or we've got to play it how to generate it. Now, in week four, we'll talk about how to fundraise and borrow money and, and different funding issues, but it's an important thing that needs to be addressed as we're doing our planning. Your business revenues needs to be a goal, too. So we're going to approach this in two different ways. We're going to approach, and uh, this will be next week, we're going to talk about a business planner and or a bit where we plan the different mileposts we need to get to as the months go along as you're starting your business. You see, we're going to be connecting the dots. At A, B, C, D, always be connecting the dots as we go through this series, and I think you'll really enjoy how we do it. And I hope you'll stay with us all seven weeks. Let me say to you that if you have to leave the uh, the program to go fix a cup of coffee or look after something for the kids or whatever, you're at home, <clears throat> stay tuned in. Don't break your connection. It's important that you log on as many minutes as you can in the series for two reasons. Number one, you have to be on board 80% of the time during the program to get credit for it towards your achievement. A certificate and graduation, but also it helps the small business center log more time zone because they generate their funds depending on how many people not only visit but stay with the webinar. So let me encourage you to stay on board as long as you can. And if you're not logging on and off, that makes it easier for you to connect back. So we want you just to stay on board. Now, <clears throat> We need to determine, or you need to determine, and think about what the scope of your business is going to be, how big or small it needs to be to, to uh, generate those goals. You know, uh, start by sticking our toes in the water, uh, not jump in and get grounded. Uh, it's really good if we can find the right products that we can sell and do it right away because I want you to make some money right away and be proud of yourself. I didn't say I wanted you to make a million dollars. I just want you to start learning how to make money in your business. And this will be a continuing process, one step at a time, with each one of your profit centers. That's the way it works. So here's a little something, a little extra bonus that you have. Next week, uh, on Wednesday afternoon from 2 to 4 p.m., there's going to be a free webinar that's all about starting an Internet sales business. And it's just the basics. So if you've just been thinking about starting an Internet sales business, this will be a great opportunity for you to, to spend a couple hours and get some really good information on, on how to do it. And uh, this, this is a, not a part of the uh, uh, Academy series, but I'll give you credit for it uh, as, as a uh, class that you've attended, and we're ha very happy to do it. So if you want more information about uh, joining this webinar next week, to get an internet sales business started, just put it in an email and I'll send you the log on information. Are you thinking about franchising? Well, that's fine if you are, but I gotta tell you, you got to be really careful, really careful about franchising because every year I have so many people that tell me they sent somebody a bunch of money to get a franchise and they were scammers. They didn't get anything in return. So if franchising is what you're thinking about doing, let me know, and I'll send you a, 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 a study guide that gives you a lot of disadvantages and advantages and do's and don'ts about thinking about buying a franchise. But the best advice I can give you is don't go in this thing alone. Before you commit to a franchise, let's talk to someone that can give you some do's and don'ts and tell you what to do to protect yourself. It's very risky business. People say, I want to be legal. Oh, I've I, I got to be legal, Steve. I hear everybody say that. Well, here's the good news. If you're just getting started and, and you can operate as a sole proprietorship and don't have to worry about being incorporated. As a matter of fact, if you're kind of turning a hobby into a business, as a lot of us do, then you can, you can do this for several years. And as long as you're not making enough income that's going to significantly impact your taxes, then you really don't have to worry about it. But you do have to worry about becoming legal and becoming incorporated when, one, your business is, is bringing on a lot of liabilities to you. Let's say you're in the food business or you have a, a transportation company of some way where that you're out there and you, you're, you're at risk a lot. Uh, or if, if you're in, uh, doing things in people's homes, such a way that 
maybe you need extra protection for your benefits, that's when it's good to, to get your LLC and to move forward. I guess it's a, for the last three years, 100% of the people in the academy that are joined have chosen to do the LLC instead of the 11 other ways that you can incorporate. So LLCs are the good way to go. It costs you less than $200 to get there. You can do it yourself or your accountant or bookkeeper can help you. And it will give you a certain amount of, of, uh, of uh, protection uh, in civil matters that would make a lot of difference for you. But I need to tell you that LLC will not give you any protection as related to criminal matters. So you still have to be the right person, the best person you can be, and to look after yourself. But as we move forward in week four, we'll talk about, and, and next week, more about uh, incorporating and what's necessary in doing that. There's going to be risk involved. Let me tell you, there's risk involved every day. And if there's money in it, if there's profit to be made, automatically, let me tell you, that risk are going to come. And we're going to make a lot of decisions. And you'll make some bad decisions, and you'll make good ones. That's just part of it. We're human beings, and you're not going to get it all right all the time. But every time we learn to make a better decision, we become wiser and a stronger person and a better leader. But here's what I need to tell you. Here's what's going to keep you out of trouble. For every risk that's involved in starting a business, there's a risk management tool that you can add on. Something you can do to help uh, help you not let those risks put you under, whether it's an insurance policy or a safety practice or uh, steps that you take. So as you, if you're worried about this, you list down the risks that you think you're taking and don't know how to handle them. Put them on a list and email them to me, and we'll certainly be able to work through it. Time management is a big deal. It is a very big deal in setting priorities and delegating. Uh, just like right now, I'm looking at my clock here at 7 o'clock, so I'm halfway through this. So sometimes we have to make adjustments related to time. But setting priorities and delegating is the way that we help manage our time. Because there's not so many hours in the day. And if you want to make a certain amount of money and you don't have time to do it yourself, what are you going to do? We're going to find somebody to help you or some other vehicle or 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 a, or, or a strategy to help you make money because you ran out of time. That's just part of it. And we'll talk a lot about that, about how to manage time and people uh, to do things. Bottom line is, is keeping a, keeping a cool outlook and know where you're headed. When we work on your business plan and on your marketing plan, this will give you a really good idea of how much time that you're giving to the business and how much delegating that you're going to need to do to, to end up with the money that you want to make. Here's an easy one. A lot of people think it's a tough one, but compliance with local laws is an important factor that so many people want to talk about. But pretty much nationwide now, the good news is that every local town Every city now has a website, and on that website, they generally list down all their local ordinances and people to get in touch with related to starting a new business. So in, in Dunn, North Carolina, where I am, you can go to their website, uh, uh, dunnnc.org, and see all their codes. You can see what it takes to get a business uh, registration. You can find out the phone numbers and the people's names of different inspectors. So get, being in compliance with local laws is an important matter. Here's the thing to remember. You want to be in compliance before you get started. You don't want to spend a lot of money getting doing this, buying signs, buying a building, putting in a drainage system, buying certain kinds of equipment, building a shed, and then end up finding out it's outside of the codes. No. Because if you had done your homework before you got into this lease or rental property, you would have known that was the fact, and you would, might have gone a different way. So here's another handout I can offer you. be glad to mail it to you, and it's do's and don'ts before you lease property. Do's and don'ts before you sign a rental agreement. I'd be glad to send that to you if that's on your mind. But dealing with local codes is generally something that's a lot easier than people think that it is. Now, is it a good thing that they have these laws? 
It really is because they're there to protect you and your property. And they're also there to keep fly-by-night or people from coming in and starting a business, which really hurts the business community if there's a bunch of crooks that are getting started. So I believe that the local uh, laws are good to have. Listen to me. I don't always agree with them and don't always agree with the personalities enforcing them. But in the long term, through the years, it's a good thing that they're there. So here is just as what it is. This is a simple business rep, uh, registration. You may have thought it was a great big, hard to read, hard to get course, but usually to get your business license in a town is as simple as you tell them your name and address and what you're going to be doing, how many employees that you're doing, and send them $25. <laughs> and then you will get a certificate that looks like this. I've, I've had, uh, I've had 64 of these certificates through the years and they're Nothing fancy, but it's, it's good to be in business. Also, I can tell you that uh, for the last several years, uh, uh, year, uh, last year as a matter of fact, uh, we were named Business of the Week again in our little town of Dunn, and I'm uh, always, glad always glad to get that little award. It shows that we're alive and kicking. Where will you operate your business? Where are you going to do it? Now, forgive me for moving along pretty quickly here. I know I'm covering a lot of ground. And part of this series is, let me just take a break here to tell you, part of this series is I'm going to put a lot of stuff out here in front of you, knowing that you can't absorb it all in a two-hour period. But those items that are important to you, and if you do get your study guide and you make notes as you go and you read them, then you'll be able to start absorbing this. Plus, the good thing about this is you can rejoin this academy uh, in, in the, in the uh, summer or the fall or at, or at uh, other times that I'll be giving it, so you're always welcome to come back and get them. But my challenge to you is to, is to look for 10 or 12 things tonight that you really want to make a part of your thinking and, and uh, or to talk about it, and let's make some progress together. So the three different types of businesses that you might operate now, so which one of these is you? Are you going to work at home? I need to Got some background noise. Somebody just came on board. If you mute your mic, I'd appreciate it. Let's see if I can find it over here. There it is like okay, it looks like it was Valerie and she took care of it. Okay. So working at home, that's fine. Or maybe you're gonna work at your home office, but you're gonna get in your pickup or your van or your trailer and leave home every day and go somewhere else to work. You see, that's going to be more expensive and more complicated because we got added a vehicle and a trailer or some tools involved. That'll make a difference in your business plan. And then if we don't have a bricks and mortar store, we don't have to start paying rent or buying property, insurance, employees, uh, more electric bills, signage, uh, security, lots of things to consider. So which one of these is going to work? I want to encourage you that if you can, and you don't have to go to one of these others, to start at home. Figure out how to do it at home because that'll be your least expensive way to get started in business, and then you can go from there. So right now in my business, I work from home with my Internet business, and I work from home with my teaching business, and sometimes I'll have to go out uh, to do canceling work, and I'll do that. And sometimes I have to go out to meet an equipment customer. But mostly I'm a work at home guy. And that's after uh, being a, going down to my office at the equipment dealership for over 51 years. So it was a change to make. All of us have to make some changes. So if you've got questions about how you might adapt from what you're doing now to where you need to go, just send me a note. And let's talk about it. We'll, we'll get it figured out. So, no demand, change the plan. So, let's just take a deep breath now, take a sip of tea or coffee, and let's ask the, the super duper big questions. You want to get your business started. Number one is, this thing you're thinking about, can, can you sell it? Can you actually sell it? Do you know how to sell? Do you have those skills? Have you ever sold anything to the public before? If it's yes or no, it's important that you answer the question honestly. Because if you need some training skills to help you learn how to sell, 
merchandise forecast negotiate then we can help you with it just just let us know because we can offer all those things for you now will they buy it is it a good product that suits the market is it priced in, in a good way uh, is it packaged in such a way that people will want to buy it hmm. now, who is they who are these customers uh, what's their names where do they live what group are they how old are they men women children uh, military people students let's identify who they are and when we do that in week three and four we're going to call those targeted customer groups or niche markets and it's really good if you can have some niche markets because they are really easier to focus your advertising and marketing to and if you're able to focus on certain groups and you're not trying to sell everything to the whole world and therefore your expenses will be a whole lot less where are they right here in town across the country the whole USA down at the beach over in the mountains out on the farm list down who they are and where they are and then we'll be better able to target our marketing and advertising and then it'll be able to pay for itself how many of they can I reach how many numbers of these people these potential customers can I reach now in week three and four we don't figure out how to get them how to get in touch with them and how to help them find us so that we don't have to worry about going out and reaching out to them but help them find us uh, we'll talk about that in during week four then we're going to focus on the marketable profit center here for a few minutes and I've got you a handout that goes into depth in talking about this this is so important remember earlier on we talked about there's three different kinds and I want you to have five each in your business five each with at least one of the three different kinds that is so necessary for you to have a diversified product line and a diversified customer base marketable profit centers that is just not saying I want some profit centers that generate money but I want market centers that I can market separately to different groups and this will make a big impact on you my little business carverequipment.com makes it because we've got about 50 marketable profit centers that are attractive to different customer groups some in Florida some in Maine some in Utah some in Montana some in California some in every state of the Union at different times of year therefore that that helps our business uh, stay in business all year long with enough cash cash flow to pay the bills that's what you want to have profit center number one and I'll spend a little time here brings in new customers promotes daily traffic brings in new customers promotes daily traffic sometimes it is the least profitable thing you will do but it's the most important thing you do because you've got to have new customers you'll lose a third of your customers every year doing the very best you can people will die they'll move away they'll find someone else they'd like to do business with so you have to keep a focus and a and a and a, uh, a structured way to keep bringing in new customers and to promote that daily traffic it is just so important so let's talk about some examples of that let's go to that let's go to the convenience store where you buy gas every day what are the profit centers there that bring in new customers it's gasoline because they can change the price of that gallon of gas one penny sometimes and it'll make all the difference in the world what how much business they have on Tuesday or Thursday just by the price of that gasoline one thing but you know what convenience stores don't make hardly any money on gasoline but they put up with a lot of it is is important to their store because that's what brings people in the store what else would be a profit center type number one at the convenience store lottery tickets because when the lottery ticket when the Powerball is high like it is now in the what, 500 million dollar range and such as that the higher those jackpots go up the more business those convenience store gets 
but they don't make hardly any money on selling lottery tickets. But they sure do it because what does it do? It brings customers in the store. It brings them in the store. Now let's talk about the uh, fast food businesses. What is their profit center, number one? It's that $5 bill like at Hardy's. You got $5, you can come get you a meal at Hardy's. You got $5, you can come get you a meal at KFC. Pretty good meal. I eat them all the time. And you go to McDonald's and they got their $5 meal deal, right? That's all about it. Because what they're after is with that $5 uh, advertising ploy is to bring people to the store. But you and I both know, you and I both know that it does bring new customers in, but very seldom uh, is it the only thing they're doing. So here's what I want you to do. You've been thinking about your business. What are, what are, what are your uh, uh, type of things that you can sell or do to bring in new customers every day and to promote more traffic. Make that list. Type two, profit centers that are after repeat business, uh, merchandise purchases, and, uh, and higher profit margins because profit center number ones are usually low profit. Sometimes you even lose money on them. Uh, that's exactly right. So profit some centers number two, we need to start getting repeat business from those customers we bought in the first time and start making some profit with them. So when you go into McDonald's here, yeah, they had that $5 meal, but you know what the average sale for someone at McDonald's is? Is 8 to $10. Yeah, because they've got all these other items that you can add to it with their merchandising deal. Yeah, you went in for $5, but when it came time to pay, we're paying about $10. At the convenience store, you went in to buy that cheap gallon of gas, or it ain't cheap anymore, is it? Or some, uh, or some lottery tickets, but while you're in there, the convenience store operators know that you're probably going to pick up something off their merchandising shelves that have a 1% to 500% profit margin on them. That's why they wanted to uh, uh, get you into stores so you could pick up items and do the merchandising. At the car dealership, where they make very little money on new cars, they want you to come in so they can sell you parts and accessories. That's a really profitable profit centers in a car dealership. And also selling tires and, and uh, other types of things. So in your business, list down the marketable profit centers that are going to help you have repeat business, merchandise products, and at some really good high profit margins. List those down and then you'll be starting your business plan. Number three, big ticket sales bundled packages and high priced items. I want you in your business to be able to have some big deposits one day, is to have some things that are generating you when you make a sale that you have actually made some money that you can feel and touch more than just a few pennies. But you have to plan to make big ticket sales or they won't happen. And you do that by either selling expensive merchandise or bundling packages and making sure that you have something to offer that helps you have some big ticket sales. Why is this so important? I will assure you that you're going to have some unplanned expenses. Oh yeah, we'll work hard on our business plan to cover all these things, but life is going to bring you some curveballs and you need to have some money set aside. A business is important to have some reserve funds, some, some credit lines in case you have unexpected expenses. And the best way that you'll be able to start a savings account and build up some reserve funds is to have some big ticket sales. So we don't plan to have that in your business. Now in this area, you folks in North Carolina are familiar with Smithfield's Barbecue and Chicken. Great business, grown a lot through the years, got a good product. I enjoy dining with them often. And I'll use them as, a, as an example. They've got their $5 meal. You can get that you can get that barbecue sandwich with slaw and some french fries and a drink for about $5. I think it's actually about $6 now. But they promote that, and that's their bread and butter. That's what brings them in the store. But the average bill at Smithfield Chicken and Barbecue is somewhere around $11.86. Because people will get two sandwiches and get them, get them their tea, you see there? So it's going to go up when you start doing that. The average bill will be $10.86. But they bring people in the store with that $5 item. 
But let me tell you, once you get in there at Smithfields, you can spend $370 or you can spend $169. They've got it fixed where you can have the big ticket sales there with their catering packages. So think about this. What are you going to be doing in your business that may have some low-cost items? It's going to be important that right from the start that you think about how you can package items to create some big ticket sales so that you can have some good size deposits one day. Now the phone people, well, Spectrum here, they're pros at it, aren't they? They have put together all these different plans for you, that twenty nine and twenty and twenty nine dollars. Well what does that add up to? Sixty nine dollars a month. Instead of twenty dollars, if you take care of their bundle package, you're gonna pay them seventy dollars a month. Therefore they'll be able to make more profit by bundling their stuff. We can do that in our business as well, and we have to work at it. We don't have to work at everything. Nothing's going to come easy. Nothing's going to come free. That's entrepreneurship. All state, if you give them all your business, the, the boat, the car, the house, you'll save up to 25%, and therefore your premiums don't be a lot higher, and they'll actually make more money by putting it together. If these big companies are doing it and making money, it is a testimonial that that's why us as small companies need to think about how we can make these three types of profit centers work too. So my challenge to you right now while you're thinking about getting your business started, how are you going to have big ticket sales? What are you going to do to bundle and have package deals so that you can have some, some extra good big deposits? That's what we want you to do. We get a sip of tea here. Well, if you hadn't figured it out already, after about uh, an hour and 20 minutes here, I hope you can see that I don't work really hard for you. And I want you to, if you want to, if you're serious about moving your business forward and getting involved with the academy here and, and sharing and uh, networking with these other folks, we will help you move your business forward if you're ready to put your shoulder to the wheel and just do some simple things. As much or as little as you want to do, you've got a challenge right here in front of you. I don't tell you it's going to be hard to do all this alone. Uh, if you're, The bigger your plans are, the harder it is to do it by yourself. So we, we'll probably have to delegate or maybe we'll have to hire some employees and maybe we even need some supporting staff. Just know that's coming. It's okay. We'll work it out because the bigger your dream is, the more folks you're going to need to have to have on board to help you make it happen. Some of the folks you might have to uh, hire and actually pay some money for the lawyer, the CPA, someone to help you with QuickBooks, graphic designers, virtual secretaries, and hardware technicians. I've been doing this for 62 years, and I have to use the services of every one of these people. I'm pretty much a one-man show with a part-time bookkeeper and a part-time mechanic, part-time uh, handyman. So when I need professional help, I save money by hiring someone that knows what they're doing to help me with it. Now, here's a mistake that a lot of you may make. You may say, well, I can do my own website, and I can do my own this, and I can do my own that. But the reality of it is through the years, after doing these for 12 years, a lot of folks will say all those things, but they never get around to it. They never find the time or the money to make it happen in your own life because you're already busy. So the, the, the new business never gets started. Sometimes it's just so important that you are willing to hire someone to get it done now so you can get your business open in a few months. Uh, I don't want you to throw any money away or waste it, and we'll talk about that about what are reasonable fees and what are not, because you're going to get a lot of help, not only from me, but also from your small business center. But don't try to do it all alone. It's just going to be hard to do. I want you to learn how to sell and how to be in touch with your customers and create Raven Fan customers. And that is a whole lot more important than you learning how to do your own QuickBooks or learning how to do your own graphic design. Uh, if you've got your business up and running, if you're doing the retail, Everything else will fall in line, so I want to encourage you to do that. We've got, through the years, we've developed a whole team of contractors that can help you get this work done. Uh, whatever the job is, I'll be glad to be able to make some recommendations to you, as would your small business center be able to do that too.
If you know right now that you're going to need to hire employees to get started from day one, then I want you to look for team players. Hire people on a one- or two-week trial basis. Don't cheap out when you're hiring someone. Don't try to hire someone as cheap as you can because when you hire cheap, you get cheap. And if people aren't satisfied or not comfortable with what they're making, they're going to steal from you. Stealing can be done either by stealing products, gasoline, or time. Or it might be just stealing attitude and morale from the other employees. So I can give you some good handouts and reading material about how to find and keep and, and, uh, and retain the very best employees that you can. Your startup costs are critical. We have to identify those in our business plan next week. So this week, start thinking about what am I going to have to buy to get started and how much is it going to cost me right now that I don't have? How much money do you have now and how much money are you going to have to borrow or get someone to, to, uh, to go in business with you or how are you going to approach this? Now in week four, excuse me, in week five, we don't uh, talk about this, about uh, working with family members, uh, using promissory notes to borrow money, uh, different things or how much it would take. And I also show you lots of ways that you can get started without spending a lot of money. Take time to look at the handout that I sent to you because right there is, I think it's uh, 20, around 20 businesses that you can start with $100 or less. That may not be a business you're interested in, but you may get some ideas there of how you can take some of those and make them profit centers in your business and spend very little money. That's exactly right. My little business through the years started as a small tractor dealership in a little town here, and I had a product line that wasn't very popular. But through the years, we'd learn how to add products and profit centers and actually turn that little business into about 12 different other businesses, 12 different profit centers that would stand alone. Remember that different type of contracting? So our startup costs were never too very high. My dad started the business with $3,000 of borrowed money from my grandmother. Of course, today it would take $3 million, but I'm going to tell you that you can start a business for a fairly small amount of money if you take it one step at a time. Just be willing to uh, open your mind to some good ideas and be willing to work. So here's an example of startup costs. Let's think you're talking about starting a trucking business. And everybody's talking about how many more trucks that we need. And I want to tell you it's a great business to start. I also tell you that on board with us tonight, I see Shirley and maybe uh, – a couple of more that are in the trucking business already. And while it sounds easy, there's nothing easy about it. And there's nothing cheap about it either. So when you start looking at getting into the trucking business, be ready to do some hard numbers and look at what it costs. Because not even buying the truck or the trailer, here's the kind of numbers you'll be looking at. Big bucks for license tax, big bucks for insurance, big bucks to fill up the, the tank the first time, Lots of money to spend on maintenance. So generally to get a truck and a trailer on the road, you're going to spend around $13,000, not counting the truck and the trailer. I didn't include those because in a business plan, they would be showing up at a different place. So challenge to you. The business you're thinking about, let's start listing down the different things that you know now that you're going to need to get. And by the time we finish this series, Especially if you share with me your list and tell me uh, what you know so far, I'll be able to add and subtract and give you some feedback to help you refine it so you'll have a real number there instead of something that you're just guessing at. If borrowing money at the bank is important, here's what's important to know. Your roots are important, the roots in the community. People are needing to know that they're going to be able to find you. They don't need to know that you, and you can prove that you paid your taxes for the last three years. Uh, you don't need that decent credit score that we talked about earlier. And you don't need to have that down payment ready so you can make a down payment if necessary. Someone is not going to be willing to give you money for your business if you're not willing to put some of your own money in it. That's just a fact, so just know that that's coming. Uh, project a lot of encouragement, a lot of enthusiasm and self-confidence. Now, where are you going to find that self-confidence if you're brand new and young and never done this before? 
You're going to find it in doing your videos. You're going to find it in learning how to do your introductions. You're going to find it in how we go about marketing, and we'll help you with that. And I can send you lots of information about how to help you build that self-confidence. But part of what I'm asking you to do in sending your photos and your mission and your vision statements and doing these uh, videos where you introduce yourself, that's all about helping you create self-confidence and self-awareness of, of, of what you can do. Let me tell you, folks want to do business with a human being, and everybody's not a movie star, and everybody's not a model. They just want to do business with regular, everyday people just like they are. And that's why it's so important with your videos and your statements that you come across as that human being that you are. That's the people that will do business with a small business for year after year after year. You want to have your personal references and your business references ready. And maybe, you, I know you don't have your personal references, but your business references maybe are few and far between. And these certificates and uh, graduating from these academy uh, series each year, they can be part of your business references. Now, the last thing on the list was the business plan. And a lot of you may have thought coming in here tonight that the first thing you needed was the business plan. Well, that's not true. The business plan is there to help you more than it is the lender. Yeah, they're going to want to see it because they're going to want to know that you've taken the time to write a business plan. And that doesn't mean it needs to be 50 or 60 pages or be very, very complicated. If you don't have an uncomplicated business, we can have an uncomplicated business plan. So don't worry about that now. We'll talk a lot about it next week, and, uh, and it will not be the obstacle that you may be concerned that it will be. You ever heard the term big kahuna? The big kahuna, you hear about that out in the Polynesian area and Hawaii and, and those parts of the country and such around. The big kahuna, that's the person that's, that knows it all. They're the king or the queen. They do it best, and if you need some information, that's the person that you would go to. The big kahuna does it outsmarts, outmarkets, outsells, does everything better than the competition, and they do it day after day, year after year. Now, why would I mention the big kahuna to, to, to lots of people here that's just thinking about getting started in business? The reason why is I want you to find who the big kahuna is and the type of business that you're thinking about starting. Because you don't have to reinvent the wheel in today's world. The beauty of the Internet and Google is that if you can find someone that's doing it right and have done it right for time after time and they've got a good marketing campaign, which they will, you'll be able to see how it's done. We'll be able to, to, to learn from, from their success and also from their failures and take good information and grow our business. I do that every day. I study my competition. Uh, well, I need to tell you, I've been to Big Kahuna in several areas of business through the years when I was the best at anyone in the country doing what it was uh, compared to the area that I'm working with. When you be number 10 in uh, equipment sales nationwide and you live in Little Dunn, North Carolina, you can be proud of that. And people will turn their head and say, well, he's doing a lot of stuff right. And we did that with a number of things through the years and took a lot of pride in it. And you know what? We still have a tremendous customer base because of that outreach that we did all over the country and working with people. How do you become the big kahuna? You do these things that are listed on the slide here. But the number one thing you do is you create raving fan customers because every business that makes it for the long term but to become the big kahuna and what you're going to be doing, you do it with customers that have stayed with you year after year. You need to surround yourself with advisors and mentors, as we mentioned earlier. Find people who will give you good advice, who are not in it for their own personal gain, but in it to watch you grow, to help you avoid pitfalls, to help you find opportunities, to help you network. This is really important. And that's the reason we changed the name of this academy series from entrepreneurs to entrepreneurs and associates. We've got a world of associates here at L that have been at probably whatever business you're thinking about starting, we've got someone that's one of our associates in the academy during the last 10 years that's been there and done that. And there's a good chance if we ask them a question or 
ask them for some advice, they will be glad to share it with us. I'm so proud to be a part of this uh, this group of people. <clears throat> you got to know your competition, my friends. You got to know them from the top to the bottom. Your competition are really important. It's the people. It's the other companies out there. Your competition is not always that other company or that person on the internet. But I want to tell you, they are there and they are real, and we're going to learn from them. We need to know their strengths and weaknesses, what scares them, how they do in their marketing strategies, and to do that, you have to do homework. Well, I'm saying we got to do this and we got to do that a lot, aren't I? Well, it's just a fact, Jack. Uh, if you're dedicated to owning your own business and watching it grow, it's going to take a lot of time and effort that maybe you haven't been doing before. And either you're going to need to do it or you're going to hire someone that's going to do it for you or surround yourself with people that already know it. But we don't have to outwork them, outbrand them, outthink them, have to use guerrilla marketing better than they do, understand what value added means and how to use it, and we're going to be the one that outlasts all the other competitors. It's the outlasting that keeps you in the game, that elevates you. Every time you lose one of your competitors that lose to you, you go up another run on the ladder. That didn't say you're you're climbing the ladder on their backs. You're climbing the ladder on your on your customers that are move, pushing you forward up that ladder. And that is so important as you have that, that realization. We don't get there by other people failing. We get there by our customers keeping us on top our customers choosing us instead of other people. That's why they're so important that we have that attitude that we don't make it by ourselves. We make it only with our customers at our back. But what is the biggest threat to you? Some of you, about half of you, have been to the academy before, but most of you are brand new folks tonight, so I'm, I think you haven't heard this. What's the biggest threat that's going to keep you from moving your business forward or being a success. Who is your main competitor? Well, I'll tell you who it is. It are the, it's the distractions, the little and big distractions that we have in our life every day. I've got them and you've got them. Now, distractions don't mean it's things that are wrong or evil or bad. So distractions could be the three little children we have. Or distractions could be our, our, uh, some jobs that we have to do from other people or demanding jobs. Maybe you're already working two jobs, and that's a distraction in itself, and you're trying to dig yourself out of that hole. Or maybe you're the primary caregiver for a loved one, your mom or your dad or your aunt or your uncle. I lived that life for, for, for three of my loved ones, and that's a 36-hour day. But still, you got to keep your businesses running, too. So fighting distractions. Dealing with all the things that are trying to take up our time and energy, that's the biggest competitor that we have in business. Yes, it is. That's the competitor we have. Now, if you're not owning your own business, if you're a bureaucrat and you're just going to work for somebody else every day and uh, you've got eight to five jobs and such as that, maybe the strikes is getting your way a little bit. But when you start creating your own business as an entrepreneur, this is a big deal. But I'm happy to tell you, you can work through it. And the key to fighting this big competitor, your distractions are, it's just as simple as we have to every day learn to start setting priorities. Doing it first thing in the morning, every morning, is saying, I need to get these things done before lunch, and I don't fight all the distractions till I get them done. Because here's the fact. You're already busy. You've got plenty to do, right? So if you don't get involved in getting this new business started, where's that time going to come from? Well, something that you've been doing for the last year or two every day, it's going to have to be put aside so you have time to be a business person. And that may mean that you say, all right, between 4 o'clock in the afternoon and 7 o'clock at night, I don't focus on my business. Or all afternoon I am. I don't know your personal situation, but I do know this. If you don't set the priorities to put some of these things that we're talking about at the top of the list, they won't ever get done. 
And yeah, I'm going to be happy to see you here at 6 o'clock on Thursday nights for the next seven weeks and love to have you on board and hope that some of it is sinking in and is helping you. But I know that if that's the only amount of time that you're going to be able to give getting your new business started, it's going to be hard to move it forward. So let's just be honest about that. Maybe you're going to say, okay, I don't give you the two hours for seven weeks, and then I'll take those two hours and start doing other things. That's fine. Just have a plan and know that it's up to you. Now, I'm pushing you and I'm motivating you to set those priorities and find the time to get your business started. Otherwise, it won't ever happen. How are you going to find and catch and keep customers? Well, in week two and three, we're going to talk about this really heavy. We're going to really have heavy because what you're going to need to do is what we talked about earlier, is position yourself in the marketplace so that people can find you. Have a diversified group of products and services that folks want to buy. And take the risk, take the risk with good risk management tools to put the message out there to the world. That's what you can do to make it happen. To catch customers, it's like catching fish. We have to keep fresh bait in the water all the time. And keeping fresh bait in the water means we have to have continuous promotions out there for our customers to see. And we have to target customer groups, keep those promotions out there, and most importantly is to follow up after sales because it's in that follow-up that you start creating your Raven fan customers. So very important. Here's a subject that always is interesting to folks that are just thinking about getting started. And forgive me for covering so much ground, but y'all are important. I want to give you a lot to think about. Now, this is one of your handouts where we go into it really deeply. The name of your business, the name of your domain, which is your website name, and other DBAs, which is doing business as, is really important to help you find customers and help the customers find you. So uh, in week four, we're going to talk about DBAs a lot and how to help customers find you. But right now, I want you to start thinking about how to name your business. And it's important that your business name gives a good reflection of what you're doing or where you are or what you're actually going to be selling. Uh, the, the more information that the customer can remember and remember your name or the product that you're offering. So when you're coming up with these names, remember that you're doing this to help customers find you. Now maybe you want to name you, maybe your name is Charles C. Charles, and that's just fine. And maybe you're Charles C. Charles the Fifth. So you want that to be your company name, Charles, III, Charles C. Charles the Fifth Incorporated. That's just fine. If that's, that's part of your heritage, and your legacy, then I don't encourage you to go for it. But I don't tell you this. We're going to need some DBAs so that Charles C. Charles can be out there in the world as used cars in Dunn, North Carolina by Charles. Or Charles's world famous hot dogs. So the DBAs that we use in our marketing plan can use the word Charles in them, but the main thing they need to tell that customer is what you got to sell so they'll remember it and come back to see you. So name is as important. So spend a little time and read through that handout that I sent to you. Next week is the business plan. Now, do you need a business plan? Heck yes. Y-E-S, yes, you need a business plan. Do you need it so you can borrow money? You might. But do you need it to help you have a successful business? Absolutely. The time we spend talking about and you putting together your planner and your estimated expenses versus uh, income is going to be so critical for you to choose in the right profit centers, the right investors, potential employees, having a good idea about where you're headed before you actually start spending money. Yeah, let's don't take those risks until we got kind of a plan and a path to follow. And you'll really enjoy what we're going to be doing with the business plan, and I look forward to working with you on that. I don't want you to give discounts. I do not want you to give discounts. 
However, I give discounts every day. So I need to finish that sentence. I don't want you to give any discounts that you didn't plan to give. When you avoid unplanned discounts, then you've got a chance to stay in business. Because discounting in a lot of different trades and types of business is so important. So I'm going to teach you how, if you're listening and pay attention, I'm going to teach you how to price your products and to price your service that gives you room to do some discounting, that gives you room to do some negotiating, and so that you're not in the situation to say to your customer, it's take it or leave it. Because if that price tag is take it or leave it, 80 to 85% of the people are going to keep on going until they find a better deal. But if your price tag is, let's talk about this. We can negotiate. We can make this. We can help you find a way to buy this product. Then you're going to have a chance to improve your sales by 50 or 60%. How do I know that? Because it's worked for me over 60 years, <clears throat> and it'll start working for you as well. Avoid unplanned discounts by learning how to price your products to give yourself some space to negotiate, to make the profit margin that you need to make, plus make the customer happy and feel like he's getting a value-added deal. That's part of what we're going to do in this series. Now, I'm bringing this thing in for a landing now, and I'll, I'll use this as a way that y'all can say, well, he's getting ready to wrap it up. That's what I try to do, bringing it in for a landing. We're going to keep our standards high, my friends. Part of what we teach in the academy is and what we try to do is to put our principles in front of our profits. Okay, we got another uh, interference here somewhere. Somebody's got a mic on. Let me see if I can find it. I'm sorry. There's probably a way here I can click this thing and turn them all off, but I haven't learned that yet. Okay, there we go. Let's take the high. Let's take the high road. Let's don't choose the low road. Let's keep our principles high. Let's try to be the best people we can be as business people. The legacy that we want to build from the night forward as you're starting to be your, your journey into being an entrepreneur, owning your own business, is that of being trustworthy, of having discretion, using wisdom, lots of ethics, and keeping your principles in front of your profits. Now, I'm the first to tell you that we can't stay in business if we don't make money. We can't stay in business if we don't make profits. But we do not have to take advantage of people, and we do not have to lie. We don't have to misrepresent things. There are ways to do business in a friendly, fun way and have fun with it to encourage people to do business with you and to sell, 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 uh, give those great uh, uh, presentations. Uh, talk about the value added, and by golly, people want to hear that. They want you to build trust with them. And when you do that, they're going to let you make a little money. Now, we hadn't said this before, but we can't be all things to all people. We're not Sears. We're not Target or Foodline or Lowe's or Amazon.com, right? We're not that. I know I'm not. We're out here not to try to sell something to everybody. But we want to be everything to some people. We can't be all things to all people, but we can be everything to some people. And when we do that, those people will become our Raven fan customers. Now, your family and your acquaintance and your whole community is going to be so proud of you if you're a successful business person. Because you're going to be in a position to help people and to be a leader. And that's what I want our main goal to be. Is your legacy going to be that of a giver or a taker? Well, mine is a giver. I really try hard to, to give back as much as I possibly can. And I have for years, and it re it's reflected in the way people come back and do business with you. Being a business owner allows you a lot of freedom to lead others, to help develop and create good things in the community and good things with your employees. So know that you've got the opportunity as an entrepreneur to become that leader and to build that legacy that you and your, proud, and your family will be proud of. What are the determining factors that will help you be a success or not, to be a giver or a taker? 
Well, we got to learn how important first impressions are. Man, that's everything with marketing and being an entrepreneur. We have to learn how to listen and keep our mouth shut. Because when you're listening to people, you're creating a relationship and you're showing sincereness in them. We need to be out there and let people see us and to be seen in important places. Yeah, we need to go to church, need to be at a chamber of commerce meeting. Uh, we need to be where the kids are and let people know that we are a business person that has time to be active in the community as well. Church groups are important. Civic organizations are important. Leadership, Toastmasters, business training seminars, Chamber of Commerce, all those are important. But i got to say here right now, you can overdo that. Don't let becoming an entrepreneur make you lose your family or your spouse because you got to keep those priorities in line as well. That's why it's important that your family and your spouse are encouraging you to follow this entrepreneur uh, journey. Let them know these sentences, why it's important for them to encourage you so that you can be a, uh, start your legacy. So important. Now, in your handout, I've got nine questions for you. Uh, you don't have to pass or fail these questions, but I do want you to try and look at them and answer them because all the answers are in this open book quest uh, test. All the answers are in the above. And at the end of the Academy series, I'll have a, a quiz that we send out for everyone to fill in the answers and send them back. And you pretty much have to make a 100 on it. But you know what? You, uh, you can resubmit it all as you want to because everyone makes a 100. If you send one in and don't have the right answer, I'll send it right back to you and show you where the right answer is. So start now getting used to these quizzes because we'll have one each week. You don't have to send them to me. As a matter of fact, I don't even want you to. I just want you to read the questions, answer them for yourself, and that way you'll be holding on to the most important things we talked about tonight. Don't wait that everything's just right to get your business started, to get serious. Maybe you don't see your business happening in the next few months. I don't either. Maybe it is a reasonable goal to say you want your business to be up and running by September 1st. That's realistic. Tell me that in the email you send to me or in your notes, and then we'll be able to make a better business plan for you. But if you're waiting for everything to be perfect, it never will come. It's as close to perfect right now as it ever has been since I've been an adult. Why? Interest rates are low. More people have more money in the market than I've ever seen because they've stayed at home for two years and haven't spent a lot of the money they want to. The reason we're having a shortage of supplies now is because people are buying like crazy. My business is doing really good. And most businesses that have an internet connection or a way to make it easy to deliver to people, businesses are well. So it's as close to perfect as it can get. Plus, entrepreneurship is very, very uh, respected now. And you're getting lots of encouragement from uh, suppliers and your customers to do business with small business. That's a big thing these days. So uh, I'm, I'm really happy to be in this game and I'm really happy that you're going to be in it as well. So I say to you, God bless you and your family. Take time to get on your knees and pray. Pray for yourself and your family and for this country and for those folks who need help or depressed or sick or down and out. Be willing to help people when you can. You, you'll never regret it. It's been a pleasure to work with you tonight. And again, I want to hear, I'll give you a steady ring. I uh, hope that you'll uh, revisit us for the next uh, six consecutive weeks. Get involved. Uh, let's start networking and make this thing work for everybody. So I'm going to turn on some microphones now before y'all start leaving. Anybody uh, that you do need to leave, you're welcome to do it. But if you want to stay around and chat a while, let's turn our microphones on, and I'll be glad to hear from any of you. And we'll chat a little bit if you'd like to. I'd like to hear if you're uh, where you're from and what you think about the presentation tonight. Steve, can you hear me? I do. Who am I talking with? This is Shirley. Shirley, yes. How are you? I do hear you. Go ahead. 
Anyone else have any comments? Steve, this is a, I made it on. <laughs> hey, is this Mark? Yes, sir. All right. Well, welcome everybody. Uh, everybody, here's our host tonight, Mr. Bart Rice. I hope everybody enjoyed the program. Yes, it was good. It was good. A lot of new information. It was absolutely well, phenomenal. Yeah, I have no doubt. <laughs> well, uh, I hope things are well with you and your family, Bart. We had a good crowd tonight. Good. I'm glad to see it. Yes, indeed. Hey, Steve, can you hear me now? I hear you just fine, yes. Okay, it's Shirley. I have a question. Um, all the presentation, I never did receive um, any of the um, the stuff that she mentioned, the handouts, so I didn't have anything to go by. But um, everything, the PowerPoints you showed, will those be um, the handouts, and would I be able to get copies of those? I, that is, um, th this is Bart Rice. I'm the director, and my... Um, admin assistant got got COVID and it kind of fell through the cracks, but I will make sure to email that to all the attendees tomorrow. Okay. And, you, okay. and so you'll have a copy of everything that Steve did tonight. Okay. Wonderful. Steve, I want to say thank you very much. It was a wonderful presentation. I learned a lot. And even though I have my two business, it was, I, I need all that stuff all over again. So, yes, I will be attending your courses um, for the next um, five weeks, six weeks, that's left, and um, you will see me. But thank you very much once again. I appreciate your help. Well, thank you. Thank you, Shirley. And appreciate you efforts out there on the highway of driving your truck and still attending these classes. That's a real testimonial to your dedication. Thank you, sir. Have a good yeah, one. Thank you. God bless you. I appreciate it. Hey, Steve? Yes. This is Cindy. I'm from John, and back in 2012, I wanted to start a business. Well, I attended a lot of your classes then, and I want to say thank you so much for helping us out because I've been in business since 2014. And, so, this, is, and this is Cindy? Yes, sir. Well, that's yeah. great. Where, where are you located, Cindy? I'm a uh, Carolina Backyard Living Center. They're on 301 and done. Fantastic. Well, thank you for joining us tonight, and uh, I hope you can attend uh, more of the series with us. Hey, look, knowledge is power. <laughs> there you go. That's right. And uh, Carrie, I see that you're Carrie Johnson. I see that you're with us. Make sure you have your email address in the chat board, if you will. That way, we'll be able to stay in touch with you. I, how you doing? Uh, I believe I sent it to you earlier, but I would okay. love I can send it to you again. Now I do have a quick question: Is it possible to get a copy of this recording that you you have? Because there were some things that I quite missed. But if not, I understand. I also I'm, didn't get none of the um, the worksheets or anything like that. But I know Bart said he'll send it out to us today. Definitely, uh, I'm working on uh, having these recorded. It's kind of a new thing to me. Uh, when I'm able to do that, I'll be happy to share them with you. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I am extremely excited. This presentation was absolutely phenomenal. I do believe I was on one of your other presentations that was believe it, how to start a trucking company. And yes. And just amazing. There's tons of information, and actually that's what I'm planning on starting. But just going through this and hearing you speak and the way that you did this so well, I'm extremely excited, and I know that this year will be the year that I'm able to get a lot of things done, and I'm excited for the next couple of weeks. I just want to say you are an absolute blessing. Thank you for all that you've done, and please let um, the blessings continue for you and your family, that you may have a prosperous, prosperous, prosperous year. Well, that's mighty kind of you. I want you all to know that I'm the lucky person in the room. Uh, sharing, just knowing that I can share a little bit of your journey with you uh, really helps me every day in my work. So we're all in this together. Let's, let's try to help each other as we go. Angela, it was good to have you on board tonight. Is this your first uh, webinar? You see, I don't mind calling people out. I don't try to encourage you to get involved and get used to talking to folks uh, to do business with them. The 
Latoya, where are you located? Um, right now, North Carolina. I'm in Reedsville, North Carolina. Fantastic. Is it snowing over there yet? No, it's not. They say we're going to get some Sunday. Yeah. Well, thanks for being with us tonight. I hope you enjoyed it. What type of business are you thinking about starting? I really did enjoy it. Um, I'm actually, I was in the process of typing up in the email, but I'm doing two different types of business. But one is where I'm being a life coach for Christian educators, and then the other one is a early childhood curriculum resource curator. Fantastic. We've got about three members of our academy uh, graduates that are really great life coaches and Christian educators. Mm -hmm. And I'll be glad to share their uh, information with you so you can see how they're marketing their business and things they're offering to do. Okay. And pretty, pretty much any of you that you let me know what type of business you're started. Uh, we've, we've probably got some uh, graduates of the academy here that, that uh, will be glad to, to, to share information with you. Uh, Bart, uh, did you notice that I've changed the name from uh, Entrepreneurs Academy to uh, Entrepreneurs and Associates? Yes. Uh, I just think that's uh, important because our, our networking is just as important as our, our teaching, I think, and so I, I'm trying to encourage more of that. That's a good idea. And just let right. I just I just sent all the study guides out to everybody, so everybody should have them in their email. That's great. All right. Anyone else have any comments? Well, Sarita and uh, Rayford, how are y'all doing tonight? Doing great, Bart. Doing wonderful, man. Enjoying the meeting like you always, man. You did an awesome, awesome job. You're just making it so exciting and so interesting, man. I, I just can't get away from it. And all well, the information we, just got so much, man. We did a little plug for your business and Keith's business tonight, and Frank. Yes, yes and sir. Next, I saw it. Next week, we're going to give a little plug to uh, Sarita and to Valerie for y'all's great work. And and uh, also, Denise, uh, we uh, did your poem tonight. So proud of your work. And let me tell you, Denise Sutton's got uh, a, a, a new uh, soundtrack out, a new poem. So uh, look up Denise uh, if you'd like to. She's got some products to sell now. Okay. Denise, have you got a word of wisdom for us? Well, I enjoyed the class tonight. Everything was fine. This is Sarita. Yes, Sarita. All right. Well, it was good to see you, and thank you for that great work on the certificates that you did for us. You're welcome. Okay. Denise, you got anything you'd like to offer, or Detoya, any more? No? How about... How about Adrienne, Estelle, how about you? Hi, how are you? All right. Good to see you. Enjoying your classes as usual. I was learning something new. <laughs> well, that's great. Well, stay with us. We enjoy having you on board. I will, definitely. Have a blessed one. All right. Well, let me say, everybody, I hope to see you next Thursday night. Again, you're welcome to join us on Wednesday if you want to learn more about starting your uh, Internet uh, business. Uh, Wednesday afternoon from 2 to 4, we'll have be having a webinar sponsored by our friends in Kenston. Just drop me an email, and I'll send you that logon information to give you a jump start on uh, and this. Now, this is just basics. If you just want, uh, want to learn about how to get started, there's a lot of good information there for you. But next week here on Thursday night, we're going to be talking about your business planner that is creating a six-month planner of what you need to do each month for the next six months, plus learning what uh, ingredients are in a business plan. So uh, y'all take care. I look forward to seeing you, and thank you so much, and have a great week. Thank you, Steve. Good thank night, you. everybody. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Good night, Bart. Good night, Steve. Have a good one. Thank you very much. All right. This is like uh, that Mount, the Waltons. Everybody saying good night. Good night. <laughs> <I like. laughs> Take care. You too.